So I got this question that says, how do I record in QuickBooks expenses that I made in cash or with my personal bank account? Now, I'm Hector Garcia, CPA and Advanced QuickBooks Pro Advisor. I'm going to go ahead and answer this two-part question because it's actually really two entirely different questions in one. And I'm going to use QuickBooks Online to show you that. So we're in QuickBooks Online now. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Accounting tab on the left-hand side and click on Chart of Accounts. In the Chart of Accounts, I'm going to identify that there is, in fact, a regular checking account in there. This is probably my business checking account, and I'm going to leave that there. That's fine. I don't have a cash account, a petty cash account. I should probably create that because we're going to answer that cash portion of that question. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new on the top right of the screen, click on that green button, and then choose on account type. I'm going to go ahead and select bank. That's the option that we're going to select. And then under detail type, we're going to leave it in cash on hand. And under name, we're going to call this uh, petty cash. So with this petty cash account, I will answer the question about how do I make expenditures uh, through cash, expenditures that I made in cash. The other part of the question is, uh, what about expenditures that I paid with my personal bank account? Now, I'm assuming that the person asking this question is the owner of the business. So when they say my personal bank account, they mean that the owner is probably commingling personal and business funds. But if you are not the owner of the business and you're making expenditures with your personal bank account and you're an employee, that's an entirely different context because the, the business has to uh, reimburse you. So basically, the way you will record it is through that reimbursement check. So let's talk about that cash transaction first, and then we'll talk about the equity or the transaction made with the owner's uh, business or personal bank account for that matter. So let's talk about the cash transaction first. So we got this petty cash account, which is a bank account in QuickBooks. Notice it has a balance of zero. So what I would recommend is just use that account uh, to make the expenditures. For example, we went to Home Depot and bought some supplies. So we're going to click on the new button on the top left hand side and then we're going to click on expense. So we're just going to record a regular expense transaction and nothing really changes here other than instead of selecting the Chase regular business bank account, we're going to choose uh, petty cash. So the purpose of that petty cash account is to record those expenditures made in cash. So I'm going to type here uh, Home Depot, create my vendor as normal select the date that I made that expenditure. On the payment method, you can actually leave this blank if you want to, uh, or you can just select cash. It actually doesn't matter whether or not you select something in there. I think it's valuable to put it uh, regardless. And then you're gonna pick the category or the expense uh, category, the account that we're gonna use to classify this. So let's say this is gonna be under office supplies and software. And this was uh, $50. And there it is. That's it. That's all you do. You create a transaction, the source account or the payment account. It's going to be the petty cash account. And then you click on save and close. Now, this is going to pose a potential problem. As we enter expenditures in that petty cash account, that petty cash account is actually going to have a running negative balance. Because logically, where did that money come from? Like, how is it even possible for that business? to make cash expenditures if it never had cash in the first place. So there's a couple of ways that cash got to that petty cash account somehow. One is maybe you made a sale and you received the money in cash. And if you don't record it in QuickBooks, then you're gonna have this negative balance. Now let's assume that a customer paid us in cash. How will we record that into that petty cash account? Well, I'm gonna go into new and then I'm gonna click on sales receipt. And then let's say I have customer Carlos. I'll just create it in there. And let's say we sold Carlos uh, via cash and deposited into our petty cash account. We sold them some service for, let's say, uh, $200. Okay. So in this particular case, I'm recording uh, money that I received in cash that probably went into that petty cash account. So I'm going to click on save and then close that and then go back into my chart of accounts, and now it's a different story. Now I no longer have a negative balance. I actually have uh, cash in there. Now I have the original 200 minus the 50 I just spent. Now let's say, for example, that I went to the bank and I deposited out of the 150, 
I deposited $120 from that petty cash account. Well, the way that will work is I'm gonna go into new and then I'm gonna click on bank deposit. Then I'm gonna click the account. This is the source account. Actually, this is the destination account. This is where the money is going to. So I'm gonna put $120 into this Chase, my actual real Chase checking account. And the money is gonna be coming from the original petty cash account and that's gonna be $120. So when you deal with cash, it gets a little bit complicated because not all the amounts are perfect, right? You got uh, $200, you paid 50, you deposited uh, 120, and now you got $30 left. Now, if those $30 stay in your petty cash account and you're accounting for petty cash account, you're good to go. You can leave that there, there's actually no issue. If those $30 disappear, because maybe the owner puts it in his pocket or spent it in some personal thing, then your job is to bring that petty cash account down to zero. So the way you do that is, I'm gonna go ahead and open uh, the register here next to petty cash so we can see the entire history of it. And let's say, for example, we're looking at this and those $30 don't exist, and maybe the owner took that money uh, for themselves. Now we should record a distribution. We should record an expense from the petty cash account into that owner's uh, personal equity account. So let me just go back for a second and let's see if we have an equity account for this purpose. So I'm gonna go down here into equity and notice I got a couple of equity accounts. I have this account called Opening Balance Equity. We're not gonna to touch that, leave that one alone. We got this account called Owner's Investment. That could work, owner's capital, owner's money, shareholder contribution, uh, additional paid in capital. Anything with those names are gonna represent the owner putting money into the business. I notice that there's another one here called owner's pay and personal expenses, which also represents members draw, shareholders distribution, dividend, depending on the corporate structure that might have a different name. But long story short, it's an equity account. And that really, that, that's all that matters. So we're gonna be using these equity accounts uh, to manage money coming in and money coming out uh, into the business. So just to simplify things for a second, this one here called owner's investment. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, make that one inactive. I'm just going to ignore that one for now. I'm just going to leave one account in there. This one called owner's pay and personal expense. And then I'm going to change the name of it again to make it a little bit easier. And we're just going to call this owner's money. So owner's uh, money. We're going to make it super drop dead simple to understand. It's just one account called owner's money, and I'll click on save and close. So if the owner wants to take money uh, for his own personal purpose, a distribution, that would be the account. If the owner wants to put money, that would be the same account. So going back into this petty cash account, I'm gonna go back and click on view register. And then from the register, I'm gonna go ahead and record the $30 distribution of the petty cash that's no longer in custody of any business uh, employee or any, any real sort of petty cash uh, box or safe, the money's gone and the owner took it. So then that would be a distribution. So we'll go ahead and create a transaction here. I'm going to click here where it says add check, click on the drop down menu and just click on expense. As you can um, suspect, that's actually the same thing as clicking on new and expense here. It's the actual same workflow. The difference is it's in the register and it kind of looks like a spreadsheet. So it might be easier to digest for some folks. So here I'm gonna put, uh, let's put the owner's name. Let's say the owner is me, Hector. So we're gonna put here Hector Garcia. And then under the account, this is the, the category, the chart of accounts category. Here we're gonna put owner's money. Cause remember we only had that one account called owner's money to simplify things. And then the amount here would be 30. And then we're gonna click on save and then that's done. So we basically accounted for cash transactions being spent. Uh, coming in from a sale and also being distributed back to the owner or being spent in some sort of personal expense. At the end of the day, when I go back, my petty cash is zero, which is what I want. But then when I run my profit and loss report, we're gonna click on reports here and then go into uh, profit and loss. What we want to see, let's do here, uh, where are we? Let's do all dates, simplify things. And what we're expecting to see here are the transactions that we entered. So notice that we have a $200 sale, which was made in cash, and never made it to the business account. Actually, $120 made it into the business account, if you can remember. And then we had $50 we made in office expenses, which was that trip to Home Depot that we made in cash. So you notice that we can, we can do accounting even if it's in cash. So just because it happened in cash, 
and the money didn't jive or match 100% of the money coming in and out of the bank account, it doesn't mean we can't account for it. As a matter of fact, you should account for everything regardless because you need to manage that business. Now, within this topic, let's do one more topic, which is, let's say, for example, I, I w went to my bank and I want to take out, let's say, $500 in cash by writing out a check to cash. People do this sometimes. They'll write a check and they'll put pay in the order of cash and then some employee or the business owner will go to the bank, cash it out, and then have cash to make business expenditures or maybe even to uh, make personal expenditures or distribute them. So how would that work? Well, basically, you go into the new button and then you click on check. So you're going to write a check. So we're going to do check and then we'll write the check out to cash. So we'll create a vendor called cash. And this happens sometimes. And then this check is being written from our business checking account. And let's say this is check 2015. And then the category in this case would be petty cash. And you don't even have to explain here in the description what the money's for or anything like that. It's self-explanatory. I wrote a check to cash. It's going into my petty cash account. I have a petty cash register. I don't need to explain what the check is for. So I'm going to put the 500 and then click on save and close. So what happens now? When I go back into my chart of accounts and then go into my petty cash account, I now have $500 in there. So as you can suspect, if I go into Home Depot again and I spend $487, uh, the balance will stay in there. So let's do that real quick. Let's go into new. Let's go to expense. Let's go to Home Depot and let's do $487. And we'll just change the date of that. Uh, to make it a little bit different and then we'll do cash and then we'll click save and close so now we got $13 left in the bank account now if those $13 get lost or they were spent in some personal expense we should zero that out uh, to zero against owner's money the same way we did it before so we'll do that real quick expense and then that's going to be from the petty cash account we gave the money to Hector and it was owner's money and it was 13 bucks save and close that account goes back to zero. It's a wonderful and a beautiful thing. Now you will also notice that the owner's money account is now gonna keep track of all these distributions and contributions, all these ways that uh, you spend money or you distributed money uh, using the owner's account. So let's talk about the second part of that question, which is how do I enter expenses that were made from the owner's personal account? Now, I don't recommend that you create the owner's personal account in QuickBooks the way I created the petty cash account. This is why I think these two uh, questions are a little bit different. And let's say, for example, that I want to record, um, let's say I, I bought a computer with my own uh, personal account. And, I, I, and again, I don't want to create my own personal bank account here because I should keep my business and my personal separate. Um, so I do need to record that. $2,500 computer that I bought. So the way I do it is I'm going to go into the check register of my owner's money account. So I'm going to go to view register. And then here, I'm going to click here. It says add journal entry. Notice I don't have the same uh, choices I had with a bank account, which I had check and expense and all that stuff. In here, there's only transfer and journal entry. So I'm going to pick journal entry and then click on that. And what's really cool about this version of journal entry is you don't get to see uh, debits and credits. You just see increase or decrease, and it does make things a little bit easier to understand. So I'm going to increase my owner's money investment into the business by making an expenditure with my own money. So let's say, for example, I went to Best Buy, and I'll click on Save, and then I'm going to increase it by $2,500, and let's say I bought a laptop. So I'm going to call this one uh, Laptop 2020, and then click on add and I'm going to create it as a fixed asset. Where are you? Fixed asset. And we'll select detail type as fixed asset computers. And click save and close. Now, whether that should be a fixed asset or an expense, that's an entire different video, an entire different accounting situation. But let's assume I want to create a fixed asset and enter it in there. And I actually spent $2,500 with my own personal account in there. So in the memo, I could put here, you know, um, used... Uh, personal account, right? Or used personal Amex or used my home equity line of credit or whatever. I mean, you can put whatever you want in the memo to justify that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save then go back to chart of accounts. And then notice that the owner's money is now 
27, sorry, 2457. And if I click on the drop down menu and click on run report, which is a little bit better than the register for this context, we can see everything that's going on in my equity account. So I invested $2,500 in my business. I took out $30 of cash that disappeared from the petty cash account. I took out $13 that also disappeared from the petty cash account because I spent it in whatever I wanted. I'm the owner, I could do whatever I want. And then this keeps a, a roll, rolling tab of all the expend, expenditures that I made um, out of my own personal account or the remaining of uh, cash balances that belong to the business or belong uh, to me uh, personally. Within the same context, let's do, it, let's do this a little bit different. Uh, let's just go back into the chart of accounts real quick. And let's say that I spent $100, um, let's say, at the airport, right? Some, some baggage fee or whatever. And I paid it uh, with cash I had in my pocket as a business owner. So how would that work? Well, I'll click on new up here. And then we're going to click on expense. And let's say I paid American Airlines and I paid with petty cash. And the category in this case would be travel. In the description, I could put something like uh, extra baggage fee for Dallas trip, whatever it is, and $100. Now, I made this uh, expenditure from not the petty cash account, but with some sort of cash that was that I had in my pocket. And I have to at some point go back and clean this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and close. And I'm back to a negative in my petty cash account. But let's say I don't make any sales to replenish that petty cash account. I don't get any cash from uh, customers to replenish that petty cash account. It truly just came from the business owner's pocket. So at this point, I'm gonna make a deposit into that petty cash account from that same owner's money account. So I'm gonna go in here into new and click on bank deposit. And I'm gonna go into account. The account that I'm depositing to is my petty cash account. And that's going to be from my owner's money account. And I'll put here $100. So I'm making this deposit, not real deposit, into the petty cash account with the owner's money account. And you did make the owner's deposit the minute that you took the cash out of your pocket and you made it available for business purpose. That is the same thing as depositing cash into a petty cash account. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save and close. And now let's pull up some reports. I'm going to go to reports, profit and loss. Let's do all dates and then click on run report. See what that looks like. I got my sales. I got my office supplies. I got my travel. Everything is perfectly accounted for. Let's pull the balance sheet, which is also going to tell another part of the story. So we'll pull the balance sheet here. We'll do all dates and then click on run. Notice my bank account is probably at around the same balance it was before. My petty cash is at zero. But if I click on that, there's an entire history of cash transactions uh, being spent from the petty cash account, being distributed, or me putting money into the petty cash account. And this is actually a a great place to know exactly what's been going on with these non-business bank account transactions, uh, cash transactions, th those sort of things. So this will give you a great history of that. And that's why I love having uh, that petty cash account. Then I got the fixed asset that I paid for my own personal funds. That's the laptop that I bought. And then we have owner's money, which if I click on that, I also get a nice history of all the money coming in and money coming out into my owner's money, my equity, my capital account as an owner of me taking money out of the business or investing into the business, whether it's with my own cash or my own uh, credit card account and so forth. And that's it. I hope that answered the question. I hope it was clear. I hope it explained how equity works and how uh, petty cash transactions work. And if you like this video, hit like, add some comments. Did I cover everything I was supposed to cover? What should my next video be all about? And I'll see you on the next one.